Hello everyone, let's look at this integral here. We have a product of sine 3x times cosine 4x. And so in, for this problem, we can integrate it using different methods. One way is to do it using integration by parts. And so we are going to do it in this video. Uh, I would show another video of doing the same problem where we do not need to use integration by parts. We just need to use trick identities. And so let's get started on the integration by parts here. So uh, we are going to set up a UV and then DU DV table. So let's do that first. We have U is equal to some stuff, right? So we have, and then we also have the V and then the DV. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, there was no preference on which one you would want to choose U to be, but usually I would try to let U be um, the function that's not a co-function if you have a product of two trick functions here. So what I'm planning to do is to let U be the sine and then let DV be the cosine um, so that I don't need to have too many negative signs right at the beginning. So let's do that. So we are going to let u be this function here. So we have sine 3x. And then what about the dv? The dv, of course, will just be now cosine 4x, as I said, right? So we do the integration right now. We are going to get, we are going to get, I, I feel like I don't need that much space. And so let's just move it closer. So I think that's better right now. So we have what we have. Um, don't forget the chain rule, right? So you need to do the chain rule when you're differentiating when you're differentiating the sine three x, right? So we have three cosine three x and then dx. Okay, so that's that. And then what about the v? The v is the antiderivative of the dv, which will give you sine four uh, x. But you need to reverse the chain rule in this case, so you need to put a one fourth right here to cancel out with the um, uh, the 4 that when you differentiate the sine of 4x. So you put a 1 fourth in front of the function. Okay, so we can start writing down the result with integration by parts. So what we are going to do here is that we have, um, so one, one thing that's really important that we need to do here is to, again, we need to introduce this integral, uh, a name, right? So we got to give this integral a name. I'm going to call this integral, uh, so in this called B, right? So we can say that, okay, so B is now equal to, and then because this is this is the integral of uh, U dV, right? So we are going to write it as UV minus integral of V dU. So if U times V, which is, <clears throat> I'm cleaning up the expression at the same time as I'm writing this down. So I'm going to get one fourth and then sine three X sine 4x and then minus okay so i gotta change the color just to highlight the negative integral of vdu so we have minus the integral v which is uh this one fourth sine 4x and then du is three cosine 3x i actually need to clean up uh, the expression at the same time here so i'm going to put the three and then the one fourth outside the integral so i will get three fourths right so we have three fourths integral and then what do we get here? We have sine 4x and then cosine 3x, right? So we put that here. So we are going to get sine 4x, cosine 3x, and then dx. Okay. So that's that's the, um, the negative integral of VDU. And as you can see here, this is still a product of two functions here. And they're, it's not the same integrand as the original integral here. The reason is that you have um, you have a sine function, you you still have a sine function times a cosine function, but this time the expression inside the sine function is 4x instead of 3x, and then the expression inside the cosine function is 3x instead of 4x, right? So we cannot really um, just, just treat that they're the same thing, and actually they are not the same thing, and so we cannot do that. Okay. So what do you do next? You need to do the integration by parts one more time. So we are going to do it one more time here. And after that, we are going to get back to the original integral. And in that case, we can solve for B because we can replace the original, um, that integral with B. And so we'll do that here. So now we are going to do the second time of the integration by parts. So now let's do that. So here we have another, we set up another table. 
with the V and then the DV here. So let's do that. Okay, so we are going to let U be what? We are going to let U be. Now, this time, you may say that we should just let U be sine 4x this time, right? Um, in this case, I would choose U to be cosine 3x because I want the, the stuff inside the function to be the same as before. So I let U be sine 3x in the first time that I was doing it. And so there was a 3x inside of that function. So this time I'm going to let u be the function with the 3x inside. So I'm going to let u be the cosine 3x. So we have cosine 3x here. And then so that the dv would now be just sine 4x and then dx. <clears throat> okay, so now we take the derivative of the uh, cosine 3x. So we are going to get negative 3 sine 3x. And then dx. And then what about the v? The v would now be space a little bit too small here. So let me move a little bit. Okay, now that looks better. Okay, so we have what? We have the antiderivative of the sine, right? So we are going to get negative 1 over 4 and then cosine 4x. Okay, so now we are ready to go back to the 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 problem and then try to see what's going on. So we have B, right? So continue with that next step here. So B is equal to 1 4 sine 3x and then sine 4x and then minus 3 fourths. Now this integral will turn into, um, we are writing this, we are treating this, this integral here as integral of UDV even though that was the negative integral of VDU from the first time of doing the integration of that parts. And so we are going to write it as the right-hand side of the integration by parts formula. So we are going to have u times v, right? So u times v, we put them here. So that's negative one fourth, and then cosine three x, and then cosine four x. Okay, so the next one, the next one would be the negative integral of v dU, right? So in this case, we are going to get what? We are going to get, we are going to get, let me see. We are going to get the integral, negative sign, we should be putting a minus sign here. Let's count how many minus signs that we have here. From the integration by parts formula, we have a minus sign. And then there was another minus sign here, another minus sign here. There were three minus signs all together. So negative one to the third power, which is just negative one. So we put minus. And then don't forget that there was a um, there was a there was a three and then a one fourth right here. So we multiply them together, we get three over four. Okay, so we have sine 3x and then cosine 4x, right? We multiply them together. We are going to get the integral of sine 3x and then cosine 4x. We're supposed to be using a green color for this integral here, but then I, I think it's it's harder to read when I'm using the same green color here. So I will just, just keep using blue in this case. Okay, so we have dx. And so we have the with this expression. Now see that see that this integral is exactly just the same one as what we had from the original problem. So we can replace this integral by b, right? So we can now write b is equal to 1 fourth sine 3x sine 4x. And then now we can start simplifying the expression by distributing the negative 3 over 4 to all the terms in here, right? So we have positive 3 over 16 cosine 3x cosine 4x. Okay. <clears throat> what is next? We have negative 3 over 4 times negative 3 over 4, which will give you positive 9 over 16. And now we're placing this integral by b, right? So remember, b is a function here. So we have b. Okay, so we have this. Okay, now our goal here is to find what b is equal to, right? So we all we need to do is to subtract both sides 9 over 16b. And then we can 
we can isolate the b on the left side of the equation. So sub, so we take one times b minus nine over sixteen b. We are going to get, we are going to get what seven over sixteen b is equal to one fourth sine three x, and then sine four x, and then plus three over sixteen cosine three x, then cosine four x. Yeah. So this is all just copying. You just need to make sure that you're careful. Okay, so we're we're almost done. We just need to multiply by the reciprocal, this 7 over 16, which is 16 over 7. So we're having the final answer. So B is equal to, so B is equal to 1 fourth. Let's do some scratch work right here. So 1 fourth times the reciprocal, the 7 over 16, which is 16 over 7. So cancel out. With that we get 4 over 7, so 4 over 7. And then I can erase that times sine of 3x, sine of 4x, and then plus now 3 over 16 times 16 over 7. So we can cancel the 16, right? So we only have 3 over 7. And then what? Cosine 3x, cosine 4x. And then plus C. And so we're done. Remember this this C right here is a constant, but that, that B would be the integral here. Okay, so this is the answer for this one. So I will do another video that will show you um, without using integration by parts, all we need are just some trick identities, then we can find the answer. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.